Riot Girl is an underground queer feminist movement typically made up of younger people based around performance art, although its true definition remains very open-ended. It turns the idea of passive girls and transforms it into active feminist girls. The movement first began in 1991 in hostile political environments following the Central Park Jogger case and the Anita Hill sexual harassment case. Consequently, female empowerment was much harder as women were constant targets in the public eye. It came into existence in the spring of 1991 after Alison Wolf, Molly Newman, and Jen Smith created the feminist zine called Riot Girl. They mainly challenged the mainstream media and dominant representations of gendered bodies, which were regarded as demanding and objectifying. Furthermore, they criticized the medium of communications for excluding and stereotyping women. Much like Green's idea of underproduction of punk, Riot Girl bands were looking for change, not for money. Punk, however, still promotes women's invisibility and systemic violence. In the US, media scrutiny and corporate appropriation killed the Riot Girl movement. However, it is still alive in other parts of the world, such as Brazil, Russia, and Indonesia, where it is a cultural form and political strategy of resistance. The death of Riot Girl in the US in the 90s can be attributed in part to the media blackout called out by Riot Girl bands. The blackout was called due to a series of misogynistic and inaccurate articles being spread. While the mainstream media played a role in killing the movement, it also allowed Riot Girl's music to be easily spread across international borders, including Brazil. Despite the U.S. death of the scene, Brazil remains the largest Riot Girl scene in the world today. This sustained popularity can be attributed to various local factors. First, it is important to address the history of Brazilian feminism at the time of Riot Girl's introduction. Towards the end of Brazil's military dictatorship, as former exiles began entering Brazil, so did their ideas. This led to the rise of Brazilian feminist groups in the late 70s and early 80s. These feminist and queer movements played a significant role in the larger effort to end Brazil's dictatorship. This allowed for the later rise of young feminists and lesbians who would lead the Riot Girl movement in the 90s. In addition, due to local economic issues, it was difficult for feminist academia to take hold in Brazil. This forced feminists to use more creative and ordinary means to spread their messages and engage in discourse. With its do-it-yourself ethos, relatively low cost, and digestible content, Riot Girl was adaptable to the lack of socioeconomic agency of Brazilian feminism. Furthermore, unlike the US scene, the Brazilian scene was heavily involved with Brazil MTV and quickly took advantage of the internet to expand to a wider audience. Current Brazilian politics have not solved many of the issues present at the time of Riot Girl's introduction. The election of Jade Bolsonaro, a far-right politician with radical views that include open sexism and homophobia highlights these issues. This has given fuel to the Riot Girl movement as it acts as a resistance to Bolsonaro's government and ideologies. Finally, music plays a unique role in shaping Brazilian identity. However, like the US scene, Brazilian punk rock is dominated by male performers and audience members. Being excluded and subjected to gender-based violence in this sphere, women turn to creating their own spaces. These spaces would be the home of bands such as Dominatrix, Biggs, Lava, Menstruação Anarquica, Cosmologia, and Caos Clitoriano, which showcase women performing in ways that challenge conservative, heteropatriarchal society. These bands started to play at different parks, clubs, cultural centers, and public spaces. Bright girls and Brazil know their music promotes real improvement for women. For example, in this video, women share how impactful the Riot Girl movement was for them. Foi maravilhoso assim ver aquele tanto de menina junta fazendo um som. Eu acho que literalmente foi o que salvou minha vida. De repente eu pertenci a um espaço onde eu podia só estar ali me descobrindo com outras meninas que também estavam só se descobrindo. A gente é a protagonista do nosso próprio rolê. Moreover, for Brazilian women, the movement normalized sexual and supportive relations between women, 
promoting an open environment to express different sexualities. This reality is very different from Brazil's conservative society and the mainstream, where LGBTQ plus cannot express themselves free of judgment or danger. In this scenario, many of the Riot Girl venues double as spaces for Brazilian lesbians to meet and build community. Although the Riot Girl movement in Brazil initially excluded black women, it has recently become more inclusive and representative, with bands such as Berta Lutz, which denounce racism. Even within supposedly feminist cycles, the right girl ideology is criticized for being a queer space advocating for the abolition of gender roles or being misandrist. In cooperation, to traditional or institutional feminists, Riot Girl offers a more accessible, inclusive and revolutionary version of feminism. In Brazil, the movement is pretty much alive and continues to challenge the mainstream. Finally, Riot Girl provides a safe space for those who are oppressed by the heteropatriarchal capitalist societies across the globe and offers an insight into feminist and queer popular culture, something that has been overlooked for much too long. <laughs>